Welcome to MWeb's Entrepreneur Zone. I'm Paul Hobden, and with me today I have Heather Moore from Skinny Limmings. Welcome, Heather. Heather, tell me a little bit more about Skinny Limmings. Skinny Limmings is a design company. Um, we produce mostly textiles that I've designed, um, also some stationery, and we sell our things online and in the shop, and we also have a wholesale side of our business. And it's quite an organically grown business. Definitely. Uh, the business has really had a life of its own and I've kind of been scrambling after it, trying to keep up. And um, what's your background? How did you get into it? Well, I started out um, as a drama and English teacher, but never really got into that. Um, and then fell into the world of illustration and school book uh, writing and uh, art directing. And then after about 10 years of that, I was a bit uh, tired of it and was looking for an, another option. So I got a script writing job at a comics company in the mornings and then uh, went to a studio and started learning to screen print. Um, then I was making quite a few things and they were piling up in the corner um, and I wanted to get rid of them so I could make more things. And I thought it might be quite nice to put them online. I'd just heard about these things called blogs. I was quite enjoying reading them um, on company time in my script writing job. <laughs> um, and I thought it would be fun to start recording what I'd been doing in my studio on my blog. And the blog gained some readership, which was quite early on, I suppose. There weren't that many blogs around. And uh, people really liked the things. So I thought, well, I'll open an online shop. There was Etsy, which was a free platform. And things started selling online. And so I presume there's been a lot of learning for you um, during this period. Definitely. Um, I mean, the way this business has grown has pretty much been in response to challenges that have come up and me feeling that it's too, that it's an opportunity I don't want to miss and learning how to deal with the challenge. So for instance, I was selling things in my online shop, you know, two individuals, one cushion cover here, a tea towel there. And uh, then I, I got an uh, email from a company in the States saying, we really like your things. Can we see your line sheet? And I had no idea, what, what is a line sheet? <laughs> <laughs> so I found out it means your wholesale price list. Um, so I drew one up, had to learn how to come up with a wholesale price to start off with, and sent it off. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure I made a big hash of it. I doubt I made any money from my first wholesale. Uh, order, but I got better as I went along. And your business, um, it covers wholesale, retail and online. How do you manage that, that mix? Well, I have a really great team these days. Um, for a long time, I was pretty much on my own. I had, I would get somebody in for a half day to help me with packing online orders and fetching and carrying, but it, it got to a point where I just, it was either employ people or quit. Um, and fortunately at that stage, uh, somebody I knew peripherally approached me with the idea of being a business manager in a kind of a freelance capacity. And I said, you're not going to freelance, you're going to work for me full time. <laughs> and so that's Pearl Thompson, who's my business manager. And um, since then, I've employed a shop manager since opening the shop and a production manager and a production assistant. So we have a big, not big, we have a, a good sized team um, helping manage all of these sides of the business, which is essential. And uh, quite a creative environment. How do you find managing creative people and, and you being a creative person yourself? Well, I think if you're running a creative business, uh, it's probably best to um, employ creative people where they need to be creative and organize people where they need to be organized. And I've, I've, I am the creative person and the people I've employed are very organized. You, you talk about the need to be organized and that must be a challenge for you having clients all around the world. How do you manage those different, different environments and different cultures? Hmm. Um, well, it's interesting. Recent, uh, we, we have quite a lot of clients, in wholesale clients, in the States. And that's been pretty easy. I've been to the States a few times, and I've got a fair sense of what people are like and what they expect and um, the kinds of shops that are buying from me. More recently, we've been getting some clients from Japan and South Korea. And it's, it's actually quite interesting because I, I, I have an idea that, that I need to know some things about how to approach 
people in Japan, but I have no idea what that is. So I'm trying to package things very beautifully, communicate in a, with the handwritten notes, be a lot more personal in a way that I hope bridges some kind of cultural barriers and, and also communicates very clearly that we're a small handmade business. And in that experience, I mean, you've de dealt with international companies. What are some of the learnings that as South African companies we can take on board? One of the things I've realized is people really like it that I'm from South Africa. There's, a, there's an element of, you know, it's not something they're used to. It's maybe a bit of a surprise, um, you know, breaking out of what they imagine South Africa is about or what we produce. Uh, and I think it's, it's really great. I think we've, we've got a lot that we can um, build on there and kind of gain our own confidence with what we have as South Africans. Just over a year ago, you opened your first retail store after having been an online retailer and a wholesaler. What have been the challenges of uh, having a, a physical store? You know, they're all actually great challenges because they're, they're such interesting things to learn. Retail is pretty new to me. Um, I've got a shop window that I like to change up every month to keep it fresh, keep it interesting. And I've learned this such an obvious lesson that what you put in the shop window is what sells. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> but I don't know why it took me so long to learn that. Um, and moving the shop around, also just learning how to interact with people who walk into a shop that haven't been there before, how to make it an enjoyable experience for them and also to communicate what it is about the brand that we want them to understand. Um, so our shop has a front area and then the sales desk and it leads through to the studio at the back, uh, which people can walk into and they'll see people working there. And it's a, it's a nice communication that this is made here, this is made in South Africa. These are, these are things that are hands-on, they're not just products that are, are there for your pleasure, they're, they're part of us. Across the, the multiple areas of your business, how do you manage customer service? With online, the most important part, I think, is that the customer on the other side understands that there's a, a human being dealing with their order and that they get an immediate response, especially because of time zone lags. You want them to feel confident that they know their order has gone through. Uh, and if there are things like delays with postage or so on, that they feel reassured that somebody's on their somebody's watching their back and their order's actually going to get to them in, in the long run. Um, and with all of, our, all of our retail and wholesale, we really, really find quality incredibly important. Our quality control is extremely high. Um, and that's partly because we want to stand behind our product, but also, you know, selling, sending things abroad, the expense of having to <laughs> resend it or have it sent back and so on is just not worth the risk. So it's, it's, it's good for us and it's good for the customer. And your business has developed most probably in the complete opposite way to a lot of businesses. You were online first and eventually ended up with a, a store. Um, a lot of other people have a store and then are trying to move online. Um, how do you see online as part of a business? Well, really, Skinny Lemmix would never have started or got anywhere without the internet. It has, I suppose, it's really shaped how we've evolved. Um, it, it allowed us to build a wholesale business, it allowed us to build a retail business, and also to get an international profile, which really helped with creating a local profile. Um, it's, I love the internet. <laughs> You talk about not following the, the trend and whatever, and you've got quite an interesting brand and a very interesting name. Tell us a bit more about that. The name Skinny Lemmix is a bit of a play on the um, playground rhyme, skinny malinky long legs, big banana feet. <laughs> I don't think everybody knows it, but it's, it's cute. Uh, it's a bit sexy and um, cheeky. Um, and I think it's, you know, people are intrigued by it and I think that helps as well. A large part of your business is about having the right product mix and the right creative products. How do you go about ensuring that, that what you create is going to sell? It's one of the things that's quite nice about having a lot of different retail um, outlets. Well, having the two online shops and the, the shop in Cape Town is we can experiment with things and, and make small runs of of things and see how people respond to them. 
before adding them to the wholesale mix. And are you surprised sometimes by what, what takes off? Ah, you know, I, I have very good instincts on the whole, but for some reason, every time I discontinue something, that's the thing everybody wants. <laughs> Heather, your story is one of those that I think a lot of people will like. It's of someone who started a blog thinking maybe this will go somewhere and it's led to some, some success. Tell us a bit more about that. I think a lot of, uh, a lot of what worked there was timing. Um, when I started my blog and my online shop, the, the design blogging community was fairly young. There weren't all that many blogs around. Um, and... So it was quite easy to make connections with people. It was a very generous space. People were, you know, some of the big international design blogs like Design Sponge and SF Girl by Bay, uh, Decorate, they were, they were also quite new. So they were really interested and we could have a little chat and they feature me. So it was, that was really important in growing my business. I think these days there are so many blogs and a lot of those big design blogs have become big businesses of their own. And getting noticed is a lot more difficult. I think it takes a lot more work these days. Uh, I think we were fortunate in that we created those relationships early on and, and they, still, they still exist. So, so for someone starting out, what, would you, what encouragement, what, what ideas would you give them? I think the most important thing is, is enthusiasm. You have to just be doing something because you really like it and not be trying to follow a formula or look like what the other design blogs would are looking like and, and just be quite genuine. Uh, people respond very well to that. There, there's lots of homogeneity out there these days. Heather, that takes us on to the rapid fire round of questions. What's the best advice you've ever received? From my husband, he said my first idea is often my best idea and I should trust my instincts. And your best moment as an entrepreneur? <sighs> so many. Uh, the other day somebody came into my shop, a, a German woman, it was the second time she was visiting South Africa and she said, when she heard they were coming to South Africa, she said, I'm coming to Skinny Lemmix. And your biggest mistake? I don't really feel like I have a biggest mistake. <laughs> what quality do you look for in people you work with? People who are good at organising themselves, making decisions. What do you think an entrepreneur needs to succeed? A lot of willingness to just keep going even when things are really difficult and just working bloody hard. What's your biggest inspiration as a small business owner? The interaction I have with my customers. Heather, what would you do differently? I don't really think I'd do anything differently. I, I love my work. I love everything about it. Um, I have no complaints. <laughs> and what makes South Africa a great place to be an entrepreneur? There are lots of opportunities, lots of small-scale uh, enterprise um, and manufacture that we can have access to, people who give you small runs of things. It's amazing, uh, especially having been to the States where I see all of their production offshore. We've got incredible opportunities here to get stuff done. What keeps you awake at night? Oh, production. <laughs> and what gets you going in the morning? The to-do list. Thank you very much, Heather. And thank you for joining us at MWeb's Entrepreneur Zone. I'm Paul Hobden, and we look forward to bringing you more interviews in the coming weeks with South African entrepreneurs.